race medals. You know, there's something great about getting one of these placed over your neck. E even if you didn't place in the top three, just finishing a race and being acknowledged for your participation, it's pretty special. After all, this medal doesn't just represent finishing a single race, this medal represents so much more. Uh, the initiative to sign up for the race, the hours and hours of practice running around your neighborhood, the commitment to stay with it even when you wanted to quit. Yep, this medal means something. If you want to run a race, you have to practice. And if you want to be good at an instrument, you have to practice. If you want to be uh, an amazing scientist, you have to put the time in. You have to practice. And as we'll learn this month, the same goes for faith. To grow, to mature in our relationship with God, we need to practice our faith. And that practice takes commitment. We define commitment like this, making a plan and putting it into practice. We thought it'd be great to help kids understand that as much as they practice for their sports teams or rehearse for their musicals or uh, study for their schoolwork, it's important to train and practice our faith. That idea is highlighted in our memory verse for the month. In 1 Timothy 4, 8, Paul writes, training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. When we commit to practicing our faith and follow through with our plan, it will impact our entire lives. We kick off the month with something else Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25 that reminds us that we're training for so much more than a gold medal in a race. As we practice our faith, we're showing the world what it looks like to trust Jesus with our whole lives. Bottom line, keep practicing what matters most. But what matters most? Jesus said that love matters most, love for God and others. We practice what matters most when we have a close relationship with God, but this isn't something that comes naturally to any of us. That's why we need a plan and a way to put that plan into action. And the best place to start is with faith skills. Every so often, we like to come back around and focus on faith skills that kids can practice to help them grow in their faith and know God more. We use four words to help us remember them. Hear, pray, talk, and live. And for the remainder of May, we'll focus each week on one of these. The first is hear. We want kids to learn how to hear from God as they navigate and personalize what they read in the Bible. We'll highlight this faith skill in week two with learning more from Jesus' familiar parable of the wise and foolish builders. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus shares that we can have a strong foundation for our lives when we listen to what Jesus says and put it into practice. Bottom line, practice hearing from God. Next is pray. For week three, we hope kids understand that praying is an important part of growing in their faith. They can pray knowing that God knows them and wants to hear from them. They can pray with gratitude and honesty, pray for their needs and for forgiveness. We also want kids to know that they can pray anytime, anywhere, because God is always listening. That's why we'll look at the way Jesus taught his followers how to pray in the Lord's Prayer. We hope kids will come to believe that they can share anything with God. There's nothing too big or too small for him to handle. Bottom line, practice praying to God. For week four, we'll focus on talk. We can know God better by talking about him with others, but this isn't just about talking about Jesus with people who don't know him yet. There's another important aspect of talking about God we don't want kids to miss. As kids process their growing faith, they will have questions and doubts. We want kids to know that they can talk about God and work through their questions with others who also believe in Jesus. We'll take a look at the time when Peter declared what he believed about Jesus in front of all the disciples. We can all share our story of faith with confidence, knowing that Jesus is who he said he is. Bottom line, practice talking about God. We'll wrap up this month on commitment with our final word, live. We know that a lot of kids love to sing and worship God, but worship 
isn't just something we do when we sing at church. Worship is really how we honor God with our whole lives through how we love others and serve them, how we give of our time and talents, how we obey and praise God, even how we rest. We hope kids realize that they can worship God every day with whatever they're doing, no matter what they have. That's why we're looking at the story of the widow's might. There were people giving lots of money, but Jesus knew that the two coins she gave meant more because they were everything she had. She gave more richly because of the attitude behind her gift. Bottom line, practice living for God. So remember this month, as you unpack these four faith skills at large group, small group, FX, and at home, you're giving kids an opportunity to develop skills over time. So when they grow older, they'll understand what it means to be the church and understand how they can hear, pray, talk, and live out their relationship with Jesus Christ. We can't wait to see what God will do in the lives of kids and families this month as we commit to practice our faith and grow in our relationship with God.